apologize for that uh, little interruption we'd had there. All right, so we will continue on where we will be uh, voting on the uh, minutes for the regular scheduled council meeting of 6 1 of 2020. You don't need a motion. Second. Okay, so a motion by Ms. Nowakowski and a second by Ms. Eggleston. Okay, I'll call the roll. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Hopkins? Yes. Uh, Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. And Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Okay. And Mr. Mayor, before we go any further, do you mind if you guys just go ahead and do the motion to excuse Mr. Cobb? So yes. moved. Second. Who is motion it? by Ms. Eggleston, a second by Mr. Grimm. Uh, Mayor Lowry? Yes. Uh, Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Hopkins? Yes. Uh, Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilwoman Eagleston? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Motion passes six to zero. Thank you very much, sir. And communications, none tonight. We will give the floor right back to you, Mr. Bridge, for your wonderful city manager's report. Awesome. Thank you so much. Let me get to that page real quick. Okay, under city manager report, it says uh, finance report will update. Um, so I just wanted to update everyone uh, with what's going on in the finance department. Also attached in here, which we'll get to later, is a copy of the letter for the Hinkle system. Uh, but we um, we got uh, we were making very good progress on getting the past uh, issues in the finance department corrected. Um, the year 2019 is about ready to be closed. Um, more and some credits in there into the system that should be uh, fi finished up here shortly. Uh, a week ago, or so I did email out a copy of the numbers that we have for our current appropriations. Hopefully, council got those. Just hold on to those. <laughs> we will be going back through that budget uh, once we actually officially uh, close the system, just to update any numbers um, that may be different. Um, so, just wanted to update you guys. Uh, very, very, very fastly are we getting caught up on our past stuff. So. This tomorrow, I'll be uh, asking you to come into the uh, city building to sign off on the Hinkle letter because uh, we got to have myself on it and also one member of the council. So we'll get that uh, sent off to the auditors and hopefully they'll grant our 60 day extension on that filing because um, we have to close out 2019 before we can start our gap and then what's the gap can lead into our audit. So, uh, but good news is, is that we're about caught up and uh, we'll have some more definite numbers of you guys coming up. Here shortly. Um, we did also today, they get our update from CCA. Um, so I'll be working on getting that out to council this week as well. Uh, but early indication is telling us that we're only down about 5% compared to this time last year. So that's good. But CCA, just like any other organization, they had a lot of staff working from home. So they're still getting all the get out. Um, so I was talking to Vicki today, and I'll have some more numbers out for you guys, hopefully by the end of the week. But again, we're only going to be off about 5% compared to this time last year. Um, I'll also have some new updates for the water and sewer bills as well. We got some information on Friday, but I'm still waiting for a second set of information. Then I'll update that Excel sheet that I've been sending council that we're tracking our uh, losses during the COVID for the water and sewer bills. And I'll also update the PCA tax collection Excel sheet that I've been sharing with council as well to help you guys kind of gauge our revenues coming in. So finance department, uh, we'll be voting on that ordinance tonight. It's effective 15 days. Once that effective period is up, we'll go ahead and post it with the requirements that council is uh, as set on that agenda. I mean, on the legislation piece, and then we'll get that final piece of the puzzle filled up here soon. Uh, but I just wanted to update everyone on the finance department um, and let them know that uh, we're about done getting called up and it's um, going pretty well. So that being said, we'll move on with the city manager report. We have our service director, Mr. Kitko with us. Mr. Kitko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, mayor, members of council. Uh, let's start off tonight with the public works department. As stated before, we had excavation has started, but we did get the curbs poured uh, today on Washington and Henry. We will get those backfilled this week with asphalt and uh, soil. Uh, the church curb repair is going to begin next week. Uh, I know it is stated on your packet this week, but we got some other small ones that we want to get finished up um, that are still part of this whole curb repair. Um, one of them being near Tal Shoyer, where we have the Clark County uh, project going on. 
we have started some minor road repairs and pothole patching, which includes the water department main, main break repairs. We did get the one in front of uh, Lee's Chicken on Friday and also a main break repair on Kennison. I know we still have, I think, five left to do plus for the water department and two or three on Main Street that will be full asphalt replacement. Under water department, uh, we've been working on the old high service pump building, but we are back on that project starting this week now that we um, have finished uh, getting the pool uh, or getting the pool complete and that it is open. Um, sanitary survey, uh, everything is uh, pretty much finished up with it as far as um, sending letters back and forth with the EPA. Um, uh, currently, Scarf Road Tower um, was scheduled next year to have the interior blasted and repainted. We were able to have that moved up to this year. Uh, it has been blasted. It has been coated. We are currently um, within our two-week cure time. So uh, on estimated of June 22nd, we will start refilling that. Uh, we will get that back online and start working on our pressure testing for Adam Street Water Tower. Um, we just had a leak detection survey completed on 6-5. We had four unsurfaced main breaks uh, that were located and an estimated 10 hydrants that were leaking possibly internally or underground. Uh, three of those four main breaks have been repaired. Um, we have one left at Church in Washington, which is in a completely unknown area to us as far as a water main. It's something we do not currently have on our um, uh, maps. So we have some investigating to do to find out where this one, this leak exactly is. And out of those 10 hydrants, I just found out today that uh, seven of those, we were able to open and close a couple times to flush and we got those to stop leaking. So it could have just been a piece of gravel from a hydrant flush before that had caused this. Um, th the three that we have left did not fix that. So we will have to do some uh, dig ups and possibly replace hydrants as whole or rebuild kits. Uh, again, uh, pool repairs have been made, pool pass inspection on 6-8 and is open for business. Um, and while I'm talking about the whole departments, we are starting to get back on track and um, we are also helping the planning department with the grass abatements. We did have a lot of them. So we're hoping after this first round, which was uh, some pretty tall grass that we will be able to be a little, uh, keep it steadier and um, the guys will be able to finish those jobs a lot faster than this last uh, couple weeks. On the 2020 road resurfacing project, Clark County has decided themselves to not participate this year on the roads. Um, however, there was still interest expressed by us as New Carlisle and a couple of different townships to still get some road repair work done. So they are going to still, as far as I know, and talking with them on Friday, uh, go ahead and do the bidding, do the agreements and administer the contract for us to try and get us a better bid price with multi-jurisdictions being involved. Uh, and I will try to keep council up to date when that will be completed. And the last thing, I did get a traffic signal upgrade um, update today. Um, I wasn't able to get it prior to submitting my report to Mr. Bridge, but the update, they're looking to start the project around 713. Uh, they are obviously way behind most other contractors. So they have told me today that they're possibly or when they do come in around that time that they will probably bring an extra crew in uh, to help them stay on track and get that completed. And with that, uh, that is my report. I can answer any questions on it or anything else that I didn't get a chance to cover. Council, any question for Mr. Kitko? All right. I just had, oh, unmute yourself, Ms. Hagelson. <laughs> Peggy, you're muted. Um, you're muted. Hey. There you okay. go. But maybe that's a good thing. It could be. Um, on the scarf tower, what? Okay, so we're in the uh, curing stage. What are we using for a water tower while that's empty? Oh, currently, we're using Adam Street Tower. So wouldn't it be a good idea to keep the Adams Street Tower? 
Um, well, there's a couple different, well, we could go into a very long discussion with this, <laughs> but one of the problems we had with this pool, especially like this year, it took us almost five days to fill the pool where we typically fill it in a, in about two days. So we're, we have to be very careful with the amount of water whenever Adams is up by itself, but it's not so much that it's not usable. It's the deterioration and the cost to bring it back within specs. And I, and I'm waiting on a few updates um, that I just found out from the EPA that just a painting of that tower is not going to be sufficient. I just found out um, that the uh, roof of that tower currently is clipped onto the bowl and there is an air gap. So you can kind of see the whole way around that roof line um, that has to be sealed. And that is not on any of the estimates from those uh, $250,000 jobs. So uh, the company that I had, which is doing our scarf tower was around that 500,000 that includes it. So Adams is sitting at about 500,000 to bring back online uh, to, uh, to meet the EPA standards. I think we should keep it. That's a beautiful tower. A lot of money. It is. <laughs> is, it not a, else from is it not oh. advisable to have a standby water tower? Water is kind of important. Oh, it is. Um, we've had the luxury to have two towers, but it's definitely not required. Um, down the road, if we were to get scarf worked on again, um, they make uh, blow off valves, they make uh, above ground tanks that take that blow off water and fill the tanks. And then we run the city on pump pressure uh, rather than tower pressure, which there are already munis municipalities that do that a number. There's actually more cities with single towers than there are with two. Could we save this discussion for a work session at a little different time? I agree with that. There you go. Um, I just had one, Mr. Kick. I know you guys have been busy and you've been working on uh, Main Street. Main Street's not due to be repaved uh, for at least like a year and a half or two years or so. Um, will you guys be going over some of the troubled areas also? I mean, I know you hit the spot in front of these. There's, there's still some deep ones that are slowly popping up. You guys will be attending those. Yeah, we'll be getting the major ones, and then the lighter ones we'll be using the Dura patch with a little bit of heavier rock. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions for Mr. I do. Um, why did the county not do the surfacing project this year? Um, from what I'm gathering, I hate to speak for them, but I think there's uh, might be the way they have their funding set up for this type of work. Makes sense. Okay. Sounds good. All right. All right. Back to you, sir. All right, thank you, Mr. Kitko. And moving on with the city manager report, our planning and zoning report with our planning director, Mr. Derek Hutchinson. Hello, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yep. Everyone got me? Okay. Just making sure my, my box isn't lighting up so I couldn't tell if I was on or not. Uh, planning and zoning, uh, to date, we have 50. Currently, I'm updating zoning applications, kind of bringing those up to date. Um, and we have currently started to use our new tracking software from iWorks. Um, this software is great. It streamlines uh, entering these applications, uh, going through the review process, and then getting everything issued. Um, we are uh, we do have the code enforcement section as well well but we have not started using that portion of it um, and that leads me to the code enforcement section uh, in the past 30 days I've issued 54 property maintenance violation notices um, that's majority tall grass of course um, I would like to give a thanks out to the street department uh, they they had some some monster yards there to uh, to tackle that uh, I mean, multiple mows on one property to get to get everything taken care of. So I, I really appreciate their help and, and what they're doing this year. Um, we uh, are currently are uh, responding to basically complaint only um, violations right now. I just just with uh, the planning, zoning, everything going on, uh, I, I can't be out there 40 hours a week. Um, so we're doing complaint only and, and tall grass on you know main thoroughfares. Uh, so I am monitoring those, and of course any complaint that we get in, uh, addressing those. Um, 
leading to the code enforcement, we, we did post for two part-time code enforcement positions. Um, and in less than a week, we've uh, got an overwhelming amount of applications. So um, a lot of good candidates. So um, hopefully that's, that's coming soon. We'll start the uh, interview process next week. Um, so hoping, hoping to have those two positions filled here, here shortly. Um, also, we'll be bringing soon to council um, some possible uh, civil fine processes. So uh, some communities use civil fines versus criminal citations in the court. Uh, some use them both. Uh, it's just an additional tool to have. Um, if we cite someone into court that is a criminal charge, it's a minor misdemeanor that does go on their criminal record. Um, and court processes sometimes can be drawn out pretty lengthy. So that, that entire time that that process is going on, that violation could potentially be existing that entire time. With a civil fine process, it's almost an instant notification, uh, instant penalty where they'll have a fine um, attached to that. And in, in our ordinance that, we, that that would be in, uh, there could be a tier and you know, an actual table. So people would know what those fines would be. Um, and then there's always a process that um, that fine can decline if they get uh, taken care of in a certain amount of time. So the quicker they get it done, that fine could be reduced. Um, but that's that's something that uh, we'll be drafting here soon and bringing to, to a work session for you all to look at. Um, and that will be for code enforcement exterior property maintenance. Uh, community development, uh, our tool lending closet, uh, our tool lending center. Uh, we have designated the area there at Smith Park in the block building. Uh, this week, actually Wednesday, we will be painting the exterior of that building. Um, anybody is, is welcome to come down there and help if you'd like. Uh, I did go out today, get all the paint and supplies. Uh, so I got plenty of rollers and brushes. Uh, we got a primer at first and then Put, the, put a base coat on over top of that. Uh, I did meet with uh, Howie and his guys today uh, about some other upgrades we're gonna do to it as far as uh, replacing a, a man door uh, and some interior stuff, but they did get it cleaned out and it's, it's looking pretty good. I'm, ex I'm excited for it. So once we get that painted, we're also gonna be bringing some mulch and kind of you know spruce that area up down there around that building just to make it more presentable. Um, I am still waiting on uh, quotes for signage. Uh, we do have some design ideas for It'll be a banner note. Signage, we're not gonna be um, left out all the time. It's not gonna be permanent signage. So uh, we'll have like a banner that will be on the building during times that we're there. And then we have a, um, like an A-frame two-sided sign that'll be out by the road um, when we are in, 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 the, in the building. Um, we'll probably uh, start hours just by a schedule. We won't have an actual open date or you know, a man time where someone will be there at a specific time. Um, once we open, uh, they'll be able to just call and reserve a time that we can meet them and get them the tool that they need. Uh, but I will be going this week to also uh, go ahead and start getting all that stuff. So we're going to have mowers, we're going to have weed eaters, leaf blowers, uh, lots of hand tools, uh, shovels, rakes, um, different types of yard tools, and then your, your basic uh, home repair tools, hand tools, um, ladders, stuff like that. So uh, super excited about that. Um, and uh, we'll have we'll have details coming out here very shortly of the guidelines and everything uh, within the next week for that. Uh, economic development. Um, there is a, a, a buzz going around. I have been getting multiple calls on uh, lots of our commercial properties here in the past couple of weeks. So um, just today I got uh, another call for a, a, a vacant business that we have that someone's potentially going in there. Um, I don't have a lot of details on those and, and, and the ones I do have the owners have wished not to share at this time, just uh, just in case some fall through. Um, but uh, it's uh, it's it's coming. So this you know this this time of uh, this time uh, that the world's in right now, and and uh, you know with, with uh, the COVID, it seems like it's it's starting to pick back up and bounce back. Um, I'm seeing uh, residential home sell, and I'm seeing commercial now starting to starting to pick up so um we got a buzz going around town so hopefully we, we keep that up cool. that's all i have tonight so if anybody has any any questions any questions for mr hutchinson i just have one Derek. um yeah with 
with you stocking the tool shed with you know miscellaneous you know random items um yeah. with elect just just kind of hit me with electricity operated tools nowadays batteries have come so far are you going to be getting any battery operated like weed eaters and leaf blowers or are you going to try and go you know gas versus electric or what are you doing there yeah so pretty much the only gas items we'll have will be the mowers and the weed eaters and really the only uh, the reason i go with the gas weed eaters they're easier to maintain easier to work on um uh, and, and then you won't have to have the i won't have to have multiple batteries on charge and making sure that something's charged with a, with a gas uh weed eater we could have it ready to go okay. um everything else though some of our hand tools we will have drills and stuff that will be cordless um you know battery power operated but uh as far as big equipment, those would be the only two gas products that we'll have. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? I have a question. I have a question. Uh, Derek, do we have an idea, ballpark idea, when it might be opening? Uh, I'm shooting for. I'm sh my goal is going to be the 28th. It's going to be that Monday, uh, the last, the last Monday in of this month. Uh, cool. So definitely the first week of May. So. Uh, with it, with the building being painted this week, uh, wrapping up some of the interior stuff next week and just getting the equipment all set up. Uh, uh, next week, I'm definitely going to start on Facebook and our website, throwing those lists out and the guidelines requirements. It's going to do this, the city uh, great. Uh, and I think people really pr will appreci appreciate these items. Awesome. Anyone else? You're Mr. Hutchinson. All right. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hutchinson. And moving on with the uh, city manager report, our fire report with our fire chief, Chief Trusty. Mayor, council, citizens, uh, for the month of May, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 92 EMS calls in the city, 18 in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to 10 fire related calls in the city and one in Elizabeth Township. We had three calls answered mutual aid by either Pike Township or Bethel Clark due to Medic 52 being on a response. We answered two mutual aid calls for Pike Township and three mutual aid calls for Bethel Clark. In the month of May, we, the division responded to one overdose. Uh, patient was revived with Narcan. Uh, two items that are not on the report that are kind of happy items. Um, one, we were in the middle of uh, doing some station renovations, new flooring, painting, getting the inside of the station kind of spruced up a little bit that's been needed for quite a few years. Um, and the big thing is on June 30th, we'll be traveling to, to take possession of our new medic. Uh, we were supposed to receive it in May, but due to the COVID, <coughs> uh, we had a large delay on, on uh, manufacturing, uh, but on May, uh, June 30th, we'll be traveling to do the final inspection on the medic and to take possession of it. And hopefully by the time we, we get it back within the next week, it'll go into full service because when we get it here, it'll already be lettered and painted and decaled and ready to go. Basically, we'll get it back here, go through some um, things with it, get it loaded with the equipment. Uh, the only thing that it won't have in it is a radio and we'll have that installed in-house. Uh, so within a week of us getting it back, it'll be in the street and we're, we will announce in time for the citizens and everyone to know uh, when we do what's called in fire service, a push in ceremony. Uh, it's where the medic will sit on the pad and the firefighters will actually push the medic back into the stall and that'll start its service. All right. Any uh, questions for chief tonight, council? All right, Chief, thank you very much for the uh, report and update. Thank you, Fire Chief. And moving on with the city manager report, the police report. I'll just go ahead and read it to everyone for the public. Uh, so New Carlisle deputies were dispatched to 34 calls, and those calls are broken down as follows. One assault, four domestic violence, three theft, five non-injury crash, six citations, two overdoses, and two suicide attempts. Um, at the bottom part here, it says New Carl residents are still under a COVID-19 alert until July 1st. Please continue to follow state guidelines until the alert is canceled. It says uh, deputies are on patrol checking businesses, looking for suspicious activity and checking for traffic infractions. 
please be safe and follow the laws. Please contact the Clark County Sheriff's Office at 937-328-2560 if you witness anything suspicious. This could be the phone call we need to, to solve a crime or save a life. And that was respectively submitted by our police administrator, Sergeant Underwood. Any questions on the police? I don't think so. Okay. So I'm moving on with the city manager report under informational items. I got a few to get through, just bear with me here. Uh, I got an email late last week, I think on Friday, uh, uh, to, for the Cradle Point system uh, for our, our police cruisers. Basically, that is a GPS tracking service. Um, right now, we use hotspots for GPS tracking, and what I've been told, it's spotty coverage given we're in kind of, kind of a rural area there. So uh, the email I got from the county, uh, this particular software unit is on sale right now at heavily reduced. So they kind of want to move forward with it for, before the sale goes away. Uh, but right now it would be 762 per unit and then 226 per antenna per car. The county will pay for that. So the only thing the city would have to pay is the $40 a month uh, AT&T Priority First Net System monthly fee. So that would be per car. We own four cars, so it would be additional 160 a month. And the car that we actually lease from them would actually, they would cover that monthly fee. So how does council feel about putting uh, updated GPS tracking units in the cars for the safety of our deputies. Council GPS would let dispatch know exactly where the car is, right? Yes, it's basically an updated version of what we already have. That's a good that, idea. Yeah, that's but that's not for, for city use. That's only for their offices to track, correct? Sure, I, wouldn't, I don't think I'd have a login information to be logging into their system to find out where the cars are at. Okay. Any other comments on that, Council? Mr. Vice Mayor? No, do you want a motion to go ahead with that? I don't need a motion. I, I kind of want to do it. I just wanted to kind of get uh, Council's opinion, but it sounds like everyone's going to be for it. Sound, yeah. Sounds like everybody's in agreement. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Sounds good. I will communicate that tomorrow morning. Me and Mr. Kiko actually have a nine o'clock meeting with the sheriff's office uh, regarding the protests that we'll get to later in the city manager report. So we will communicate that to them tomorrow. And I thank you. Um, city building operations. So the, I am going to be opening the lobby on July 6th. That's the first full week of um, July. Uh, however, it will be open by for appointment only. So if you do need to make appointments, see Mr. Hutchinson or myself or Mr. Kiko, we still we can honor that now. We're going to keep them in the lobby. And then we're going to see how July goes and see how the case count goes in uh, Clark County um, before we open up fully up to the public. But we'll have a lot more opportunity. Now that everyone's there five days a week, things are moving a lot faster than what they were when we're there every other day. Um, so we haven't had any complaints about the, the drop box system or anything like that. But we do need to get back into the face-to-face -face meetings. I know Mr. Hutchinson's going to have to meet with some people. I got to start meeting with people again. So how we're going to do that is we're going to let them in and, and just keep them in the box so we're not coming back to the back area where we all work. Um, we have the window there that separates Angela from the public, but however, it has a, a big hole in the middle, at the bottom of it, so a slip for papers go underneath. And the amount of draft that gets sucked in to where Angela's in is is bad. I mean, it's, it's a constant airflow. So um, I think we're going to play it safe and just allow it open for July for appointments only. And then we'll analyze August for having it open as normal. Um, but for right now, again, just reiterate, we're just appointment only just in the city building. Um, so there are any other city building is still going to be closed to the public, whether it be the water department or wastewater department. They don't get a lot of visitors there anyway. Um, any questions or concerns on that? No. Okay. So I am happy to report that all city parks, including courts and playground equipment are now open to the public. Um, shelter house reservations, uh, we will resume those in July. Um, I just want everyone to note that there may be guidelines that we'll have to post at the shelter house that says this is what we have to follow per the state guidelines. Uh, but I feel as though that we should probably allow those reservations to start taking place again. Um, that's a revenue stream for the city. Uh, but I just wanted to update council with that, especially if you guys get any uh, feedback from the citizens who go in there and they have to follow certain guidelines. Those guidelines are going to be mandated. We, we put them there from the state. Any questions or concerns on that? Mr. Vice Mayor. Yes, sir. Are we going to incur any extra cost due to the sanitation of the shelter uh, house after use? Well, we'll definitely have to clean it. Um, 
I don't know if we have to clean it after every single use. What I'm thinking about doing, and so I still got a couple of weeks to think about this game plan. Is we only have like a lot of meetings. I mean, Saturdays and Sundays are kind of big, so um, they have these medical grade foggers you can buy, and you can just place them in there overnight, and they do their thing. We also have a guy in town, local in town, that now does the sanitation with the fogging. So I'm going to be looking at different avenues that we have to do, but we are going to have to clean it more often than we did before. Is that something that council wants me to look into or do, do council think that we should just cancel the reservations for July as well? Are, are we going to have to incur any labor costs, additional labor costs? Again, yeah, we're going to have to pay someone to clean it. All right. Should we be raising the fees? Um, I mean, you can, um, I think it's too late to do it for July because these, a lot of people have already paid on their a set of guidelines for the pricing. So if you guys want to raise the fees, that's going to be done at the next council meeting. Well, my uh, feeling is if we're going to incur extra cost, either by sanitation and or labor, then that's going to have to be something that's going to have to be borne by the rental. Well, the other option too is just cancel them for July and just be done with it. We only have four or five reservations at this point in time. Are the cleaning fees going to exceed what we receive on rental? More than likely, yes. How much? Wouldn't, couldn't, um, I'm sorry, go ahead, Mr. Grimm. I just I don't how much? have a cleaning number. I don't have any figures for me for you guys right now to say this is how much it's going to cost to clean versus this is how much it's going to cost to let people rent. So right now, when we cancel reservations, we'll cancel it. We'll just send them, a, send them whatever money they put down to it. We'll send them like a $25 fee. So uh, they, next time they rent it, they get that discount off for their inconvenience. So um, we can always just close it for July, see how August goes. I'm trying to get things back to normal in the city. But um, right now, we have a company coming and clean it once a month. I think it's around $2,000 to clean every single time, but that's multiple buildings. Um, but I am going to work on getting quotes from another guy in town who does it. Um, but if you're going to pass that cost on to the people who's renting it, that's going to shoot the cost of the rental up. I would say probably a hundred bucks. I'm, I'm assuming. I, I don't. I don't know. Additional hundred dollars. Well, I, I'm. They're all speculative numbers because I don't have anything in front of me as far as how much it'll cost to clean. Like I just said, right now we pay around two thousand dollars, but that's the water plant, the wastewater plant, all our cars, our city building all that guy comes in on a Sunday and does it with a fogger. We, can we not use the, um, the stuff that the chief has uh, that they use, I think, at the fire station? It's that, that mist that they use, and it kills, you know, whatever, you know, the virus within, I think, like 30 seconds. I mean, can't we just have one of our guys go in there and mist it all and be done? Well, do we want to pay overtime for that? Because if someone rents it on a Friday night, and we got to do it Friday night and Saturday for the Saturday rental, or Saturday night to a Sunday rental, someone's going to come in to actually do the work. Right. Yeah, I didn't think of that. So my plan was to, you know, if we allow to do it, maybe have it because this sort this stuff doesn't last on surfaces very long. So you can actually let somebody go in and do their party, let it sit for three or four days, maybe go and do like a rough cleaning, or we just take the easy out and we just say we're not doing a shelter house rental for July. Um, I'm going to make a motion that we cancel July until we get this thing under control. I know they're talking about uh, 130,000 deaths by July 4th. They're talking about this coronavirus coming back with a vengeance in September and October, which nobody knows at this point. But I'll make a motion we cancel July until we get this under control. I really don't need a motion, so if that's what council wants to go, I can just cancel the reservations. I haven't, we, have, we haven't had a motion this year yet. So if we can go maybe get opinions, that would be great. Any other feedback, council, on which way to go with this? I'll just go across the board. Ms. Hopkins? Um, I think if we're going to cancel it, we need to do it tonight because July's not that far away. Right. Mr. Graham, Ms. Eagleston. Uh, until we know what it's going to cost us to have it cleaned after each use, I mean, 
kind of silly to rent rent it out for fifty dollars and it's costing us one hundred and fifty to have it cleaned after they use it. All right, Mr. Grimm. I would like to see definite figures how much it would cost to clean it each time. We don't have time. I'm just what I'm going to do is politely just cancel the reservations for July. Our next meeting is not till July sixth, so. What I'll do is I'll just cancel for July, get some cleaning numbers, and then we can assume for August. Okay. Okay. Mr. Okowski, did you have anything to add? I agree with that. Okay. Let me note that. Figures, July close, cleaning figures, and we'll look at August. Okay. I mean, this is something that we might have to come to the realization. It may not open for the remainder of the year, especially if it comes back in the fall. The price of this medical stuff right now is skyrocketing. I mean, before all the COVID start, you can get one of those <coughs> medical grade foggers for maybe 20 bucks, and now they're significantly more than that. Uh, like a buddy of mine gets them for uh, the space that he worked out of, and the prices have significantly increased. So um, we'll definitely get you some cleaning figures, but I think the price point to clean for a cleaning is going to put the rental rate a lot higher than what it's actually worth. So we'll definitely get some figures for you. Okay, so we will move on. Where am I at? All right, uh, council, in the packet, I put in a little motion to approve for the local government from fund from the county. So it kind of looks like this on your city manager report. Um, so basically um, every three years, you guys have to approve the formula that they use. So that's what I need tonight is I need a motion to approve the formula they have suggested. I have questions. Sure. The last time I came around, a uh, number of council members questioned why Springfield gets 48% and we get less than one quarter of 1%. Springfield is maybe 10 times bigger than we are, so the, it does not correlate. I was running newspapers at the time and we put a public records request to the uh, county clerk of courts for information on how that formula was devised because it was done so long ago that nobody currently in office remembered. So we did a records request for how it was, how they devised it. And at the time, the um, clerk of courts had just taken office, Melissa has just taken office and the records were in such poor shape that she would have, she had no idea where to look for them. Um, I am going to question why Springfield gets so much more and everybody else gets a pittance. Because they're significantly larger than us from a municipality standpoint. So their population is way bigger than ours. And most of these funding mechanisms come based off population numbers. But that Springfield's population is 10 times ours. We are, get, we are getting one or two formulas and they choose the second one. But I also remember this last three years around that council members had brought it up and the dollar amount between the two formulas were minimal. It's not like New Carlisle is going to get a significantly more amount if they choose to use formula A versus formula B. Until New Carlisle gets a population similar to Springfield, we're always going to get less funding. But, not purport, but it's not proportionally less. Maybe it's maybe the requirements not for it to be proportionally less. There might be other things that go into that formula as far as um, low income need. There could be all kinds of things that go into that equation. But I do remember this three years ago that it was, no matter what formula they use, it's not going to have a very big increase on either way. So when you look at some of this stuff on here in that packet, it's not only between town uh, cities, but it's also between municipalities. I mean, township. So let me try to find it. <clears throat> I, think it, I think it's a fair representation just based off the populations. And Bethel Township is what, 25,000? Somewhere around there? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. And they are getting 
No, they're also a township and not a municipality, so that may have. They, they, well. they don't provide as many services as a municipality. Yeah, something like that. So, yeah, there's a lot, and I, I appreciate your willingness. I think I remember you doing that as per the newspaper that you ran um, the, three years ago when council went through this as well. But I do distinctly remember like the, the, them coming back and saying no matter what formula they use, it wouldn't result in kind of different funding amounts. Um, but I also recall that they had a hard time coming up with it, why they use Formula Two versus Formula One. But anything else, Mr. Grimm? No, not right now. All right, Mr. Weissmayer. Is this a situation that we either accept it or reject it, or we don't get anything? I don't think so, but I don't see the reason why you guys should reject it. I mean, it's local government funds. This is money that we get every year to tune about $25,000. And really, it's not the county. The county just administers the money from the state of Ohio, consider them the middleman when it comes to funds distributed from the state. So it's not even really, the county can maybe choose what formula they use, but the amount is still dictated by the state. So I don't well, really don't see the need for council not to really approve it. I would hate to I understand that situation, but I also concur with Mr. Grimm that I don't believe the allocations are anywhere near correct. Well, my advice to you guys is I've been the manager now for five years. I know Mr. Mayor has been on this for the last time around. It came up and there's not much of a difference between the funding mechanisms. But at the same time, too, the county's not going to change what formula they use. I remember them saying that last time, two, three years ago, we went through this. They said, we're not going to change the formula they use. So I would hate for you guys to sit there and not approve this. When we went through this, every three years, this, this comes back up with council, and it's always the same question with the same answers. But ultimately, that's no, it's, it's, it's the same questions, but nobody can give any answers. Well, if council chooses not to approve it, I can definitely pass that along, and that's that could be up to the commissioners to see how you, how they want to fund you guys. Council, uh, any other questions on this one? Okay. <coughs> we, we do need a motion, correct, Mr. Bridge? You needed a motion, Mr. Bridge? I'm looking at some things right now. Oh, okay, sorry. You good. I just gotta find it here. Uh, do you remember, Council, if, if they put a deadline on here? I've got it in front of me. Let me see. I don't see any deadline on it. Well, my advice to Council is you should approve it because I know it's not going to make a difference in whether they change their funding formula. <laughs> not going to make a difference on how much money you guys get. So I'd hate to have any adverse reaction from the county because we didn't approve the formula. So I don't know if that means that we won't get the funding. I don't know if that's something that you guys cannot do anything on tonight and then get back with them. Um, so, I mean, the best you can do is if council has questions on it, I'd rather you guys not make a motion on anything and just maybe look at it at the next meeting. Okay. But it's going to be the same results as we got three years ago. In other words, three years ago, we went through the same procedure and we still aren't any further ahead. Yeah, because we're not changing their formula. So if you guys would say, no, we're not doing this, we want you to change your formula. Well, if I remember correctly, Springfield has to agree to that since they, because they got the most money. Imagine that. <laughs> what participation does the city of New Carlisle have in the whole thing? This is a local government fund, so we don't have a lot of say in it other than what we're doing with it now. Right. So it's funding that we get from the state of Ohio that the county's just administer. Okay. So we can uh, let it ride for a little bit longer. Please. I'd love to deal with it next meeting. And what would you guys like me to ask the county? So I can be clear on this. I'm going to again ask Melissa if she can find the uh, 
uh, paperwork on how they arrived at it last time. Yeah, because like, I remember, I, I could be wrong, but when we asked them, and I think you already touched on it, Mr. Graham, is they didn't have an answer for how they came up with the formula. She couldn't find the, the any paperwork on it. it right. the, because there's two formulas per the ORC that you can use. Formula the one. State formula and a locally agreed to formula. There's two different formulas you can use, and this is the one we are, I, we are using. We are using the locally agreed formula. I've been trying to find out how they arrived at that. Fair okay. enough. I'm going to ask her again. Okay, so we're just going to put that on hold. We can either put it on hold, or if somebody wanted to make a motion to move forward. Hold. All right, All right looks like we're going to be holding. Hold. Hold here. All right. There's your answer, sir. All right, so we'll move on with the report here. All right, so attached with this report is the Houston filing letter. So tomorrow I'm going to need Mr. Mayor to come in and sign that. Uh, so basically, it's attached there. Council has a chance to review that. Hopefully, you guys already did. Uh, but that's the letter we have to send to get the extension into the county to, for our filing deadline. As we discussed earlier, the waste management renewal call is in there. It's attached, so you guys can use that for your uh, decision making. Uh, peaceful protest in New Carlisle. That is tomorrow. Um, I mean, not tomorrow. That is Saturday, uh, one to o'clock. So tomorrow morning, me and Mr. Kiko have a meeting at the sheriff's office at nine o'clock. To discuss that. Um, so basically, I've requested multiple extra duty police officers. I mean, I want one dedicated to our fire and S department, be with them nonstop, make sure they're covered. I would like some uh, <coughs> protesters, and I also want them uh, covering an intersection. So tomorrow we will have a game plan down, hopefully, better that we can communicate with council uh, after our nine o'clock meeting. Um, so that is, they are starting at Smith Park at one o'clock. Um, and they're going to walk through town on the sidewalks. The whole thing should be over by 3 p.m. Madison, I would, like, I would like to make a comment. Mm -hmm. A lot of the uh, protests, um, if there's been a massive police presence, they have turned violent. Um, if more <coughs> passive police presence, not aggressive, not showing up in full riot gear, uh, things go a bit more smoothly. Okay. I've seen protesters where it's actually been really peaceful when there's more police presence there and it got violent when the locals tried to run the protesters out of the town. So I need to make sure that not only are the protesters protected, but also our citizens who may be there to watch. So I'm open to ideas. I'm sure the sheriff's office have got way more better information on this and how to proceed. <laughs> Tomorrow we'll probably have a better game plan with how they feel comfortable and how I feel comfortable moving forward. With it. When they're walking, are they going to be on the sidewalks or in the street? Uh, they're supposed to be on the sidewalks. That's what the email said. Mm -hmm. Yep. So uh, once we get more information on that, I'll definitely share it with council as far as the police presence and all that good stuff. Uh, Madison Tree School, I know some members of council already know about this. It's already on Facebook, but it is good news. We did get approved to have that school building torn down. So that will take place in 2021. Um, so the whole project, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, is around $220,000. Excuse me, we will be responsible for around 56,000 of that, and the county will take care of the rest. That includes putting it out to bid, um, opening the bids, all that good stuff. So we, we literally can get away with getting that school torn down for about $56,000. So um, I'm sure there'll be legislation in front of council uh, when that comes, <coughs> stuff and maybe accepting the bid. I don't know, uh, the ins and outs of that. Mr. Kicker will probably a little bit more information on it. Um, it will definitely keep council abreast of that, but that is good news. I know there's been an elephant in the room for a lot of council members um, for a very long time. So um, very excited to say that, yes, we got it again, similar to what we had a year ago. Uh, so hopefully council approves this particular purchase, I mean, project, and then we can actually get it down and hopefully get some productive land there in the next few years. So that is good news. It's a big win for the administration and big win for council. So hats off to everyone who worked on that. I appreciate that. And upcoming, we got street light assessments and abatement utility assessments. Those usually occur around August, September-ish. So those will be coming up. Um, so I just wanted to put council aware. 
All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Bridge. Uh, Council, any questions for uh, Mr. Bridge before Mr. Vice Mayor? Uh, Did I not see that we needed a work session on this uh, trash contract? Have we set that up yet? Mm, oh. oh, yeah, I do want to get work session. So let me pull up my calendar. <clears throat> Um, the work session needs to be based on council's uh, willing uh, uh, preparedness, really, because really the work session for me is what do you guys want in the trash bids so we can get the specs going. So I think you should have ample time for you guys to get out and talk to your constituents um, and find out how they want the trash contract to change. But my need for the work session is to make sure council's on the same page so we do the bid specs, there's no area of confusion. I have both, I have bid specs from Fairborn, from uh, Kettering, and I've got our old bid specs, which are only going to take a few uh, changes based on what we have talked about today. Can you email them to us? The bid specs? You got the specs already emailed from uh, the city. I can email you copies of both uh, Hettering and Fairborn if you so choose. Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right. So, do we want to, does council want to set a date? Yes, please. Mr. Bridge, what looks good for you first off? Um, it's not what I wanted. Give me a second. Let me pull my outlook calendar. <clears throat> How much time do you guys need to get with your constituents? So we can either do it maybe in July, beginning of July. I don't want to do anything this week or next week. Um, and then the last week, I'm only in maybe one day. I'm going, uh, Taking some time, and then I got jury duty. So, um, realistically, for me, if we're trying to get done by August one, some, sometime. Sorry, I'm going through my calendar. The week of July six, we can do. You got the week of July thirteenth. What do you? Uh, what looks good for you guys, Council? I mean, I can make pretty much anything work. It's empty. You guys want to do it in just start our regular work session early? We do yeah, July 6th, and then if we have to get into the second week, we can do that. Good idea. Should we start the work session early, Mr. Cook, just in case? Did you hear that, Mr. Cook? No, I did not. Can we start the work session early, like at 5 or 5.30? We can have it in the middle of the day if you want. That might be a little difficult for Mr. Mayor. No, I can make it work, but I mean, if it you got you're talking about adding it on to the work session, Mr. Bridge. That's an idea. I mean, that's fine with me. I suppose having a work session like Wednesday that week. If we're we're meeting the week of July six anyway. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, we could just tack it on a little bit early to the work session. Are you okay with that, Vice Mayor? Anytime. We have lost Miss Nowakowski, by the way. Okay. Okay, so 5.30 or 5 to start on July 6th. Do you have a lot to go over, Mr. Vice Mayor? No, uh, depending on how, how we want to change this. Right. You know, with the minor uh, changes that we talked about today, that's immaterial. It's not going to be that far. The only thing I'm looking at, if we put that disclaimer on the first part of that, the fact that we do have the possibility of an extension, that can be written in very shortly. The other section, if we decide to bring the billing in-house, then that's going to have to be another uh, add-on. 
I don't recommend, I don't, I mean, we'll talk about it, but I mean, bringing the building a house is going to be tough to do. Well, I do. Hmm. I didn't, I didn't hear you. What'd you say? I want, I want to see about bringing the building in the house. If council agrees to it, fine. If not, then we go a different route. Oh, no, no. Yeah. I certainly look into it. I'm just saying it might be tough to do for this first year. We have to do a lot of updating on our end as far as our software and stuff. Okay. So what, so do you think a half hour prior to the six o'clock work session, Mr. Vice Mayor, is good or? I think that would work. Okay. Is everyone else okay with that? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So the next council meeting will we'll start the uh, work session at uh, 530 leading into the regular work session at six. Because okay. that would give us an hour and a half. I think we could pretty well wrap that up. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, do we need to do any voting on that? Um, we can, yeah, we can go ahead and make a, if someone would like to make a motion to do so. I move Don't we move. start session of the next meeting at 530. Thank I'll you. Second, but then. Mr. Cook. Mr. Grimm and Mr. Vice Mayor. Awesome. All right, Councilwoman Hopkins. Yes. Uh, Councilwoman Adelston. Yes. Um, Vice Mayor Lowry. <laughs> You've been demoted. Vice like. Mayor says yes, Mr. Oh, Mayor. Oh, I'm an okay, sorry, Mayor Lowry. I was looking at yes. Mr. Brooke at the same time, sir. I messed up on this at some point in time. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. All right, now I'm all messed up here. So I'm going to just circle back. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh, that passes five to zero. Thank you, Service Director Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Grab them leather gloves, buddy. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right. So I think I'm done with my city manager report. Thank you. Hey, Linda's having technical problems. Okay. Which is why we lost her. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm done with the city manager report. All right. Thank you, sir. And then uh, we will be going down to, let's see, your communications, say manager's report, uh, comments from members of the public. Mr. Bridge, how's our inbox looking there, sir? Looks great, but I'm a member of the public. Can I say something? Yes. Thank you so much for your time and energy tonight, Council. I appreciate it. That's all the comments from members of the public. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Got to have something there. And then... Um, Committee reports, none, so we will drop down to resolution. Mr. Bridge slash clerk of council. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, resolution 2020.08R, uh, introduction, public hearing and action tonight. A resolution adopting the update of the Clark County multi-jurisdictional hazard mitigation five-year plan. Council? So move. Second. That was Vice Mayor Cook. And, and Ms. Eggleston with a second. Okay, uh, explanation of this uh, uh, resolution. Every few years, the county has to update their hazard mitigation plan. They have their board approve it, and then it's passed down to the local jurisdiction within the county, whether it be a township government or a city government. And then that particular council also has to approve or deny their modifications. All right, Council, any questions before we move forward? Yes. Sir. This thing is almost 400 pages. I've been able to get through maybe 30, but I had a couple of questions. It says all the things that it covers. Does it not cover insurrections or riots? Human cause. That was the Council. hazard report, right? I don't hear your question. They are directed to uh, EMA, County EMA. So if you want to give me a list of questions, um, we'll have to just put it on the side because I am not the uh, authority to um, answer the questions on it. I'm assuming most people just kind of look at it and be okay with it and kind of move on. But I don't, I'm not going to have answers to the questions. So about. It says as part of the Disaster Mitigation Act, 
Let me, let me enlarge this so I can read it. As part of the Disaster Mitigation Act, communities that desire to remain eligible must have a mitigation plan in place and it shall be updated every five years. Do we have such a plan in place or is this it? This is it. That's why okay. the, I think it's the last thing of the resolution. It says this, we have to adopt this as our plan too, which is why council has to approve it. Okay. Mm. Okay. All right, bye. Anything else, Mr. Grimm? That's all I had. Thank you. Okay. Do you guys want to proceed with the vote or do you want to give me a list of questions and I can give them back to the EMA? So we have some time on this one. Um, okay. So if we want to hold on it, no one make a motion. If you want to move forward with it, make a motion. Or I mean, I would, I would much rather read more than just 30 pages. Okay. So we'll just put a hold on it. Okay. When would you guys like me to bring it back? How, how much time would you need? That's a problem. Well, Mr. Grimm, what would you feel comfortable with the next when, meeting? When is our deadline? Um, it's in here. I want to say it's um, next meeting should be okay. Let me see. I think February of proceeding year. Yeah, twenty eighth of each year. February twenty eighth of each year. Yeah. Well, February 28th of this year has already passed. So, um, yeah, I don't have the big doc. I didn't put the big document in here. There's, this already, <clears throat> there's already been a motion on this. So, do we need to make a motion to hold this? Well, this says 2019. Hazard Mitigation 2019 on the first page. Are we a year and a half late on this or is it just an update? Probably just an update, but I know that they were behind on getting it out because of the COVID stuff. Okay. Okay, so if we're gonna postpone until the following meeting, does you guys wanna retract your motion? Do I second it? I have yeah. Mr. Cook and the second by Mrs. Eggleston. I who? We'll go through. Cook you. And Eggleston. He said Mrs. Oh, Miss. I retract my second. I'll withdraw the motion. <clears throat> okay, so it'll be postponed till our next meeting, Mr. Bridge. So we are looking, postponing the LGA formula and the mitigation plan. Correct. Okay. Well, as, as we can find out if insurrections are included. I'm just gonna ask you to email me your questions so I know exactly what. So any council member, you have any questions about the mitigation plans, email them to me and I will forward them up to Lisa at County EMA. Okay. Sound good? Yep. Awesome. All right, so uh, resolution 2020-09R. All right, so um, Chief has a yeah. comment. Mr. Bridge, um, getting with Lisa, you may want to do it sooner than later uh, because she has accepted another position and will be leaving EMA very soon. That's sad news. Yes, it is. Very sad news. Sad news. Mm -hmm. uh, I was notified last Friday of it by herself that she's accepted another position and she will be leaving very soon. Okay. All right, thank you for the information. She's a huge loss to the county. Yes, she is. Who Ken is Johnson it? will be doing her interim. Then later. Okay. Thank you for the Who's information on that. Appreciate that. Okay. Who's leaving? Uh, Lisa DeSella Andres, she's the county EMA director. She's a fantastic uh, resource to have and a great person on top of that. All right. All right. Back to you, Mr. Bridge. All right. So resolution 2020.09R. It's introduction public hearing and action tonight. It's a resolution for the expenditure of CARE Act funds. Move to accept. Second. So that was a first by Mr. Grimm, Grimm and, a, and a second by Ms. Eggleston. Okay. 
So an explanation of this is the first step of if we want to get reimbursed on any potential uh, expenditures we occurred due to COVID. Uh, so this is step one. Uh, after this is effective, I'll go ahead. I mean, actually it's passed tonight. I'll go ahead and uh, register our account with uh, OBM, which is Office of Budget Management. That's step two. And then we'll have to get all our, uh, our expenditures in line. We've been tracking them the entire way and see what's eligible, what's not. Um, and then once we have a final number, we'll submit. And then, of course, we'll keep council updated on that process as well. Okay. Council, any questions? Do we know how many, how much, ex, uh, how much our expenses are? Uh, right now, they're in individual Excel seats between departments. So I have to go and add them all up. Ballpark? Dollar six ninety eight. I don't want to give any estimates. I really don't know off the top of my head. Is it something that's going to make us very happy or something inconsequential? It's going to be something so small we don't even know if we'll qualify to get reimbursed. Okay. I don't want to lead anyone with a big number because I don't. I don't think we're going to hit it. We haven't had a many other than going out to buy some maybe sanitizer and some spray. I'm curious to know if we can get reimbursed on iPads I got for administration because that's something we got for the Zoom meetings because of the COVID. Your guys' iPad for council we just got for um, reduced paper. So this, the bill's like this big, shocker. So we'll have to go through see what qualifies or not. Okay. Would we be able to put the shelter house uh, charges in on this? Um, if it requires cleaning, yes. Not lost revenue? Mm, not lost revenue for expenditures only. Hmm. So if we were to open up the shelter house in July, this would cover the cleaning of the shelter house after use. Oh, I, gotta, I don't want to answer yes or no to that. How about maybe? Always a maybe. Has council been reading up on the uh, Senate Bill 310? No. Okay, yeah, it's a very big document and it, 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 every, everyone's got their own regulations you have to go through. So um, uh, it's really due for expenditures. It's not really loss of revenue oriented. So basically when you look at the definitions, it's cost occurred due to any COVID related items. So I don't know us canceling our shelter house and then going to pay to get it clean because we opened it is going to be an eligible expense. So it's directly for expenses occurred because of a result of COVID, not revenue loss. So we couldn't go in and get um, wages like stuff like that unless our, they were there for COVID purposes. Mr. Bridge, I just wanted to commend you on your poker face. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right. Any other questions before uh, Mr. Bridge calls for the vote? And and your complete non-committal. I see you on screen though. I've learned to be very vague when I speak because then you get <laughs> and if you're off a penny, they come after you. Before the meeting. All right, man. When you're ready, you can call the vote, Mr. Bridge. Awesome, Mayor Lowry. Yes. Uh, Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Oh, sorry. Councilman Hopkins. Councilwoman Hopkins. Yes. Councilwoman Nowakowski. Yes. Uh, Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. And Councilman Grimm. Yes. Awesome. That measure passes five to zero. Thank you, sir. And when you're ready, down to ordinances. Five. Right. Six to zero. Yes, yeah, six to zero. Okay, six to zero. All right, so ordinance 2020-20, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance permitting the city manager to post a final director position and setting the possible compensation. So moved. Thank you. Second. And that was Mr. Grimm. Yes, sir. Okay, explanation of this ordinance. It is due to um, setting the rate of pay for the hopefully new finance director that we get and also permission for me to post it in the job awards. Any questions, Council? <coughs> All right, I think that one's pretty self explanatory. When you're ready, sir. All right, uh, Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Uh, Councilwoman Hopkins. Yes. Uh, Councilwoman Eagles. Uh, sorry, Councilwoman Nowakowski. 
Yes. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Eagleston? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. I tried to keep it neat, but it's a mess. Am I under all the other papers? Yeah. Okay. So that measure passes six to zero. All right. Awesome. Thank you. All right. And we're holding on the other one. Okay. What do I do now? The other ordinance. Act read. 2020 dash one, just the reading. All right. Read only. Ordinance 2020 dash 21. Introduction tonight. Public hearing and action on 7 6 2020. An ordinance adopting the tax budget for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2021 and submitting the same to the auditor of Clark County, Ohio. And then other business, I can read it or you can, doesn't matter. All the business community garage sale last weekend in June, 27th and 28th, and city offices closed Friday, July 3rd, 2024, 4th of July. Thank you, sir. All right, while we're under other business, does anybody else have any questions, comments, or anything else related that they would like to talk about? Yes. Mr. Grimm. I would like to make a public statement. On June 3rd, I shared a post on Facebook. The image says, black lives don't matter to black people unless killed by a white person. Y'all not ready for this conversation. Y'all kill each other every day. And then it went on for several lines explaining how he was, he was concerned when he sent his kids out that they might be killed, not by police, but by black people and saying that uh, black people need to get their act together. I did not write this, I shared it. The person that originally wrote it was a fellow named Michael Dozier from Fairbanks, Alaska. Michael Dozier is black. Michael Dozier has a PhD. Now you don't just go into Walmart to buy a PhD. I think Glenda will say it's very difficult getting a PhD, correct? Correct. Okay, the guy has to have some gray matter between his ears. Um, and he appears to not have received any flack from it. I received an email. I'm gonna have to lean closer to my computer to read it. Um, I'm writing, it's from Alexa Roddy. I'm writing today to demand your immediate resignation from New Carlisle City Council. The racism that you have proudly expressed online has no place in our society, let alone, or let alone, from an elected official in today's climate. I will not waste my time trying to explain to you how hurtful and dangerous your words are, but I've attached a few screenshots so I know what it looks like. Um, accordingly, I've also copied the vice mayor and everybody else. I call on all of you to condemn, condemn council member Grimm's public statements and join me in condemning racism and demanding his resignation. I am dying to know what in that post that I shared that I did not write would be considered racist. Um, I also heard from the president from Denise Williams, the president of the NAACP in Springfield. She said, this is not the time for this. I asked her what the time would be and she hemmed and hawed around and did not give me an answer. Um, I just want to clear the air publicly I do not consider one race better than another, simply be, or members of one race better than another, simply because of the color of their skin. If I did, I would not have the number of black friends that I have that I treasure. And I don't look at them as black friends. They are just friends. Um, the way I look at it, we're all the same. We just have different packaging. Thank you for allowing me to vent. Thank you very much, Mr. Grimm. Anyone else before we get to the end of this meeting? All right. So our, let me get here to my schedule again here. Our next, uh, let's see, we have no executive session tonight. And our next meeting will be on July 6th. And instead of 6 p.m., it'll start at 5.30 p.m. So we can talk about uh, trash talk. Um, so with that being said, if no one else has anything else, we would need a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Second. And I didn't put that on my sheet. Adjournment. Who is the by Mr. My, uh, the motion was by Vice Mayor Cook, and then the second was by Mr. Grimm. Okay. Um, Mayor Lowry. Yes. 
Uh, Councilwoman Hopkins? Yes. Councilwoman Eagleston? Yes. Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. Uh, Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. And Councilman Durham? Yes. All right, Durham, six to zero. 